Thank you. I love you. Still, I thought you were talking about see your name or something. I think she saved my life. A lot of people mad at you over that, but that's all right. <laughs> well, I, I, this week, I have felt better this week than I have, and I couldn't tell you when. It started out Wednesday, yeah. It started Wednesday. I went and got my hair and my nails done on Wednesday. Got my oil changed. And uh, so I, I had to go. I went to, not had to go. I went to Georgia because Kim, y'all pray for my baby girl. She's, uh, her, her, she has tendonitis in her hand, and she can hardly use her, what is this one? This left, yeah, the left hand, yeah, and uh, it's really swollen. And anyway, she couldn't cut my hair, so uh, I went. I called Sister Georgia, and she said, "Sure, I will." So I went there, and while I was there, this beautiful lady, actually, I've known her for a long, long, no sure about Valley days, actually, way back in the day, Miss Dio. Let's give her a good welcome this morning. She's so beautiful, and I, I told her, uh, she says she listens to us every week on on the on the phone. She listens to our services. I said, well, that's great. I said, I'll do you a special song. And uh, I didn't know it would be today. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I texted Georgia back. I said, tell me that I'm going to be listening today because I'm going to sing her a special song today. And uh, she just showed up this morning. So we're glad to have her today. And uh, anyway, we're so blessed this morning. And I'm going to do that song for you. And then I'm gonna, uh, and we're going to turn the whole service over to Sandy and Marla. Marla's going to be leading us in praise and worship, and we're in capable hands there, I guarantee you. Go ahead, keep pull that up. Though. And I need the words, too. <clears throat> I used to do this song years ago, <clears throat> and the other day I was just thinking about it because this is my life right here. He looked me on my faults. Yes, looked me on my faults. That's all I need. George and I, I've been trying to find y'all's phone number all week. I thought of something. I won't say it over the little bit, but I thought of something after I met y'all last week. I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. No big deal, but anyway, I'll just say it like this. We got mail from you for a long time, remember? And I didn't realize who it was. And uh, when I did uh, see you last Sunday, I guess that's why I looked at you, because I thought, this is not the lady I thought would be in the mail. I need the words, Keith. I need monitor also, brother. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. Not a good track. <laughs> right. I do not know just how he came to love me so. He looked beyond all my faults and he saw Take away my 
praise for that. Yes. There's no trial, there's no situation that he won't, that he's not greater than. Come on, amen? He's greater than. That's good news to me.
Wesley hymn, huh? It just says, Pastor friend of ours, 
And I was so upset over it. And I told the Lord, I don't understand. We believe for healing. We went to the funeral. We didn't go we didn't go to the funeral for a funeral. We went for a resurrection. We really did. Actually made people mad. We didn't mean to make them mad. We just really believed God was gonna heal. And so, anyways, uh uh, when he wasn't healed, I was so frustrated and upset over it. And the Lord told me, he said, Marla, I'm, I'm pleased with your faith. Your faith is what pleases me. Stop getting stuck on the outcome and recognize that faith is what I want you to continue to feel and to walk in. So never stop believing. You have to keep believing no matter what. Till, the, till they close their eyes and go to heaven. Still believe people to be healed because God heals. He's a healer. So I want to say that this morning. Let's do one more song. It just says, It was my cross you bore So I could live In the freedom you died for And now my life is yours And I will sing Of your goodness forever Keith, it's worthy. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus.
by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will bring all of our hearts into alignment according to your word, not the word of the world. Bring our hearts into alignment with what you are saying. What is your message? What are your instructions? What are you doing? May we give more attention to what you say than what the world is saying. Father, I pray hearts would be open this morning to receive this word that is unlike any other word that's beginning to come forth in the body of Christ right now because we are living in different times. It's not like it used to be. But thank you, Father, that you are still the same. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Father, that you have not changed. You are still on the throne. You haven't fallen off your throne. And you are still alive and well and still giving life to all who would allow themselves to be positioned and aligned according to your spirit to receive what you are pouring out. We give you praise for it. We thank you. You can be seated this morning. Amen. We are so excited to be here with you. You can keep, just keep playing more. I just feel the hope. Yeah. I just, I had wept so much. I can't tell you the last time I cried as much as I cried in this house. This morning. You know the Spirit of God is here. There is no judgment. There is no, if you want to know what it feels like to not be judged, just pause and consider how you feel right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is an atmosphere. This is a God atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. This isn't a religious atmosphere. This is a relational atmosphere. Come on. Come on. This is what it feels like. This is what Jesus feels like. This is what the family Yes. I'm just going to release this really quick. I know to many of you it may look in the natural, even you pastor, it may look in the natural, that this work is on the last lap. But I say it's a new lap. And I believe God, and I keep hearing the word incubator. Wow. And I believe God is, has, it has, has planned for this house to be an incubator wow. for what is already begun. But it's still so small and the seeds are still just barely beginning to peek up through the soil of people's lives. Come on. Thank you, We're not returning to what we used to know right. as doing church. Come on. Come on. We're not doing church anymore. We are the church. Yeah. You better live it. You don't have a prayer life. You better have a life of prayer. There's a difference. And I believe the Lord is saying this house is, is postured and positioned. And he calls it an incubator. Wow. Where some of these new seeds and these new seedlings and the new growth. New babies, newbies can come in. Not be judged because they said something wrong or they said it in a wrong context. Not be criticized for the way they look. I see, I see people of all walks of life, listen to me, coming into this house because it's relational. All right. The body of Christ, I think we shocked ourselves this last year. Yeah. We've seen how weak we really are. Corporately. Yeah. Talking about not on necessarily on an individual basis. But we've seen places that we've not allowed God to be the strength. And we've leaned on one person or we've leaned on the pastor just because you know we've set him up in a church system where he's the only one right here. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying necessarily in this house, but I'm saying corporately. Yeah. We've looked at a few and said, oh, they're the ones. They've got it. When God is trying to say, you're all mine. I talk, I talk to all of you. His word says, seek me and I will be found. That's right. If you look for him, you'll find him. If you listen for him, you hear him. Yeah. But we've depended so much before last year 
on hearing God through a, a particular voice. And then when lockdown came and we couldn't hear that particular voice, here comes fear with this friend's anxiety and panic and depression. Suppression, oppression. And the body of Christ on an individual basis struggling to hear, to see, to know God again. That was your incubation time this past year. Hello? That was your time to be shut in in a warm, cozy, tight place with God to hear Him, not to become more fearful because of what the media is propagating. You better hear me. I'm not up here to preach politics except the kingdom politics. All right? God is greater than every report that has come out. He's greater than the vaccine. Yeah, come on. Come on. Listen to me. Body of Christ, listen to me. Believers, listen to me. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't have the vaccine. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, if that vaccine becomes your save all and becomes where your faith is, is resting, you're in the wrong. That's right. The Bible says. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Yes, it is. Come on. That's what God says. Yes. Yes. So you better check yourself to make sure where your confidence lies. All right. Yeah. Help us, God. That's good. Yeah. Before I get real way, way into this, we've got some things on the table back there. They are tools to help you in this next season. There's oil if you get anointing oil. There's no magic about it. It's just a thing, a, 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 a symbol of contact. Yeah. The book of James says, is there anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders and anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith that they may be healed. Hello? Yeah. Then we've got some CDs. Marla's got a couple back there and then I've got, there's two more this time. One by our spiritual father who is, he lives in Wales, and if you're of the 70s and 80s folk song, folk guitar kind of worship, Gates of Praise is for you. Yeah. We have a precious friend, Mary Steyer, who lives in Phoenix, Arizona. She's country western, writes most of her music. You need Mary. Um, but what I'm most excited about, because of the season we're in, and what is happening, I have, we have our father's, spiritual father's book back there, Alignment for Assignment. I urge you to get it. I urge you to get it. It is a right now, yeah. where we're at, this is it, right now, where we are, explanation and understanding of what we need to do as a body of Christ on an individual basis. To see if we'll all do our part, then when we come together, as the many members get one body, then the body work works healthy. She's healthy. The bride, she's healthy and fulfilled and completed. And then I'm most excited becoming one in our Heavenly Father through intentional intimacy. This has been a four year labor of love and a challenge for me. In 10 days, I will have the books. It will release. Becoming one in our Heavenly Father through intentional intimacy. Wow. And I urge you to get this book. It's a healing book. Yes, yes it is. It will heal the hurt places. Yes. And it will help you understand why you are the way you are. Why you're you. It will help you understand who you are. It will help you understand your purpose. Because it's all about nurturing your relationship with God first. Yeah. And then others. So, for this book, with this book only, I'm going to take, I'm going to have to take pre-orders. If you want it, you'll have to pre-order it, pay it, and then I'll drive the books out here to pastor as soon as um, they arrive. And I'm very excited about this. Yeah. These two actually go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, as 
as far as if you're wanting to mature and grow to where you're to be to because let me help you guys this is not a word of doom and gloom but it's a word of truth this whole COVID thing it's just the beginning I'm not bringing doom I'm really not and if we think that this vaccine is a one shot wonder and then all the, it's all going to go away we're stuck on stupid we're SOS. We are stuck on stupid. Do you hear what I'm saying? God, I'm not saying God brought it, but He sure does take advantage. How many of us know that everything the devil means for evil, God takes it, He turns around, and He makes it for His purpose? That's right. And if it, this thing has caused the, the, the body to raise up and to truly live in body life, taking care of one another, watching out for one another, checking on one another throughout the week, yeah. not just on Monday and with midweek, I mean Sunday and midweek, then guess what? It's working for our benefit. Yeah. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings 18, 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? Do you want to falter or do you want fire? Wow. Come on. You got a choice. We got a choice. You know this story. It's the story of Elijah being up on the mountain and he challenges all the prophets of Baal. And Elijah presents to the people, how long will you falter between two opinions? Because I'm going to give you a 21st century picture of what was happening. The people, when they were around the prophets of God, they were listening to what God said. But when they got out among themselves in their own camps and in their own tents and got to listening to what people were saying in the groups around the, the campfire and began to talk about the issues of life, they began to believe the media propaganda. So they would fluctuate between believing what God said and believing what the people said. <laughs> and Elijah challenges the prophets of Baal. We know this story. They, he says, I'll even let you pick out the two bulls. I'll let you pick them out. They cut them. He said, I'll even let the prophets of Baal go first. You show your signs and wonders first. We let you go first. Guys, do you know where we're at? Come on. Go first. Show us all you got. <laughs> yeah. Come on. And so the prophets of Baal got up there and they started dancing around. They started hollering and screaming and saying all this, all the idolatry, speaking to the idols and begging them to burn up this bull and nothing happened. And it went on for so long that the people became anxious, they began to worry, they became fearful, and you know what they started doing? They started to mutilate themselves. Wow. They started to cut themselves. The Bible said they cut themselves so deep that the blood just began to run. As was their custom. Wow. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. What kind of custom is that that when you don't get your way, you cut yourself? Yeah, come on, breathe. What kind of brandiness is that that yeah. when you don't get just your way, get what you want? It doesn't happen as quick as you want. You start cutting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So Elijah lets this go on, and it goes, and he even begins to mock him and taunt him, which, you know, I'm not sure that I would have done that, but <laughs> maybe I would have. I don't know. But he goes, come on, show us what you got. Is that all you got? Come on. Where, where's the fire? <laughs> he did. Well, maybe I would have now that I think about it. Maybe, maybe I would. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. Because I would be so sure of what was coming. Oh, yeah. So now it's Elijah's turn. Lays the bull out. He says, dig a trench. Yeah. 
He said, I'm going to stack the cards real high. He says, dig a trench and pour water in the trench. Yeah. One time, do it again. Two times, do it again. Three times. I believe it was one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. He got that that plate. Well, first he set 12 stones up. He created, he made an altar. And some of us are at the altar stage. You've learned to create an altar in your life. Come on, preach. An altar to alter you. Come on. Wow. An A L T A R to A L T E R your behavior. All right. Help us, God. All right. It's all good. So he digs the trench, pours the water. There's no, absolutely no way this thing is going to burn. No way. It's too wet. It's too saturated. And Elijah goes up on the mountain. How long will you falter between two opinions? He goes up on the mountain. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That the people may know that you are the Lord God. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. For the people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. That's key right there. I'm going to read again. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. That this people may know that you are the Lord God. And that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Immediately the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. And the wood and the stones. Have you ever seen wood? Uh, fire consumed stones? Come on. And all the water, the dust. And it licked the water out of the trench. No fire till the hearts of the people Come on. were turned back Come on, yeah. to God. Come on. No fire till the faltering was, was over. Till they picked an opinion. Till they decided what they would believe. First John 4, 4 and 5. This, there's a lot of scripture this morning, but you need it. You are of God, little children. You've overcome them. Who have you overcome? Right before uh, this scripture, John is talking about the spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist. Anyone that doesn't confess Jesus is the Son of God is the Antichrist. All right? That's who he's talking about. You've overcome these spirits. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. Watch this. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. Making a mistake. Don't fall into the trap of believing the spirit of error just because it looks like it's coming to meet your need. Know what the Bible says. Know what the truth of God is. Know what He says. Let Him be your opinion. That's right. Let if you walk in to take the vaccine, go already knowing that your heart is set on God. Yeah. You gotta hear what I'm saying. You can't have one foot in Him and one foot in whatever everything you're hearing out there. Right. Because let me tell you, there's a lot of poo poo going on out there. And that's what it is. And ain't none of it lining up, standing together. Everybody's got a different opinion. There's so many opinions out there, the spirit of confusion is trying to arrest the people of God. That's right. We never lived in times like we live in right now. It is a challenge for every believer. It is a challenge on a daily basis for every believer to stand firm and hold on to the Word of God. I mean, I find myself asking people, can I touch you? 
Because it's, did you know that even scripture, some of my scripture posts are being taken down. <laughs> That's why, listen, I think I had a prophetic word years ago. I used to get upset or frustrated with people when I'd come into a sanctuary and nobody had a Bible, but they all had a phone or an iPad. Huh. <laughs> huh. I did. Yeah. God had to deal with me on it. I'm not going to say I'm lying, I told you. <laughs> they can't take this down. <laughs> they can't take it away from me. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> and if I'm dependent on all the little gadgetry that they control, whether you believe it or not, they control the internet. And if they chose, who is they? All them little people flying around up there in space, I guess the aliens. I don't know. But <laughs> if they chose, I mean, we just experienced blackouts, rolling blackouts just these this past couple of, what was it, two, three weeks ago. Yeah. And your, your iPad and your phone would work till it wore out. Then you had no power to power. Does, does somebody hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm going? That's right. You have to get back to the basics of your relationship. Oh, I agree. What did you need in relationship when you found Christ? What did you need? It was just you and Him. That's right. What was probably placed in your hand by the pastor of the local church? Probably a Bible. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? We have to allow the Holy Spirit to take us to a place mentally. And a lot of times our mentality will change because of our physical circumstance. Yeah. Now listen to me. Yeah. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to take our mental, our psyche, to that place where we don't need all the gadgets and tricks and baubles and beads to be able to function. Do you hear me? If you can't stand alone in your nakedness before God Almighty and say, I got nothing else. I got nothing. And be okay and know that He's going to fill you and complete you and write the words of His love and His commandments on your heart. Yeah. If you need a gadget to do that, if you need the, the media to know what's going on in the world, you're in trouble. Because as believers, we don't need to know what the world is saying. <laughs> we don't need to know what the world is saying. Because unless we are rooted and grounded like that man that built his house upon the rock, you learned about him in first, first grade Sunday school. You're going to fall. God don't let us a house to fight and will fall. Are you going to falter or do you want fire? Come on. Yeah, come on. What do you want? Who is God? Ask yourself, who is He? Is He really greater than what I face? Is He greater than this COVID garbage? Is He greater than hunger? I couldn't believe the shelves of the grocery store. I've never seen that in my life. Have you? And I still don't get the toilet paper thing. But I still don't get that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't know. That wasn't great. I had my sons running all over trying to find toilet paper. <laughs> Got on Amazon. They marked it $80 for 16 rolls. I don't think so. I'll go find a Sears and Roebuck catalog. Like, <laughs>
I went through a, a, a time of sickness and it was all brought on because for some reason the enemy decided to put that spirit of fear on me. We were in New Orleans ministry. We had, actually, we had uh, just held a healing service on a, a Sunday. Phenomenal. God was, I mean, he moved. Miracles were flowing. People were lined up outside, all the way outside the door. Monday morning, I wake up about 7 o'clock in the hotel. I go to the restroom. The next thing I know, I'm waking up on the floor. And that scared me so bad. That's the doorway that that spirit of fear came in. And it brought anxiety and it brought panic. Two years I fought trying to get up out of that thing. It was crazy. It, I cannot tell you how crazy it was. My body was doing all kinds of weird things because of anxiety and worry and fear. I didn't feel faithful. I didn't feel like praising the Lord. I didn't feel like reading the Word of God. I didn't feel like any of it. Well, guess what? In an 18-month time period, I learned to get past my feelings <laughs> and learn to depend on the Spirit who I knew lived inside of me. Amen. I quoted, I literally read the Scripture because I knew that the Word lives. If I would read it and get it out of my mouth, get it to come out of me, even if I didn't feel it, that it would work on my behalf. With a little help from my bestie, she wrote a declaration of faith, and she came to me one day and she said, "Oh, uh-uh, you're not, you're going, you're not gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, don't go. Well, maybe y'all can go to her for some <laughs> empathy and care, and but I can't. But it's like, uh-uh, you're not doing this. Uh-uh, get up. No, no, you gonna get up." Take a shower, change your clothes, and, when you, and then you come back and you're going to read this. Right. I said, I don't want to read You're going to read it. I said, I don't. You're going to read it. Wasn't that me? Yes, you were. <laughs> oh, yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> and so I began to read this declaration of faith that was full of scripture. And she said, now you can go lay, you can go lay down and you can go to sleep. But I'm going to come in, I'm going to wake you up in an hour, and you're going to read it again. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. I thank God. You know, Jesus sent them out two by two for a reason. you got to have a two in your life. You hear me? you got to have, especially if you're in ministry. Because when one's down, the other one is, is can be the cheerleader and is up. It's a bad day if you're both down at the same time. <laughs> We haven't had many of those. But that's when you gotta call the force. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's when you gotta call in reinforcements. But anyway, I began to 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 um I, I found a doctor finally because I after several trips to the hospital, one in an ambulance, because I literally thought I was dying. I finally found a doctor who would listen to me. But not until God help us get this. I pray y'all get this. Not until I had already ministered to my spirit. Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah. The word of God. Oh, then he brought me natural help. Yeah. Why is it that we know this truth, but we're so quick to draw and and draw for natural help? Before we go to the spirit. The only way the spirit of fear is going to be annihilated out of your life is by the word of God. Because God says, I didn't give that spirit. That's not my spirit. My spirit is a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Well, how do you get power? How do you get strength? How do you get filled up? How do you become strong? 
by the word of God. If you don't know the word, you got no strength at all. Good Lord. Even if you say Jesus wept, you got a little bit. Do you hear what I'm saying? We are in times right now. It is on you. It is on you. It is on the responsibility is on you. It is on you. It is on me. It's not on the one person that we sat behind the pulpit to say, thus says the Lord. We have 66 books of thus says the Lord that we must depend on now. We must depend. Look, body of Christ, stop debating what prophet was right and what prophet was wrong about Trump being in office another four years. Quit tearing them up. Stop it. Because we don't, none of us know. Our, the best position we can take right now is this one. <laughs> Nobody can see us and we can't see anybody. Yeah, so good. We can only see the word. <laughs> Listen. Are we listening to the spirit of truth or the spirit of error? Listening, trusting, and obeying the spirit of God is what strengthens us. It sanctifies us. Which brings me to my next scripture. Have you ever seen this? This slapped me in the face. Two days ago, I went, my God. Jesus. I've read it a hundred times. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, talking about Jesus. For by one offering, one offering, he has perfected forever those. Do you know who the those are? Who are being sanctified. <laughs> Do you know where the body of Christ is right now? We're all saved. Yeah. But too many have stopped right there at salvation. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Some of us just want to be saved, but we don't want the sanctification. Oh. If you are being sanctified, then Jesus has perfected you forever. Yeah. Do you get it? We have to be willing to be sanctified. What does sanctification mean? Sanctification simply means believe God over everything else in your life. Yeah. Live your life that brings holy honor to Him. Yes. Live your life. Let the words out of your mouth reflect Jesus. Yeah. Because the second part of 2 Corinthians 3, 16 and 18 says, But we all with an unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, what are you reflecting? Yeah. Do people see the glory of God on you? Or do they see the last news report you listen to? Do they hear the glory of the Lord when they have conversation with you? Or do they hear fear, worry, anxiety, and, and panic? I dealt with this thing. I overcame it. And I'm laying in my bed a couple, uh, a couple of nights ago. And the Lord just let me see. You went through it. You overcome it. You overcame it. You overcame those spirits. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Yeah. Come on. I overcame it because he who is in me is greater than the one in the world. And I overcame it. The Lord said you overcame it so that you can help the rest of the body, the body of Christ overcome fear and anxiety. Because if there's a round two of this garbage, come on, guys. The devil has already beat us down, worn us out. Try to put restrictions on us that don't make any kind of sense. And they're okay in this part of the world, but they're not okay in this part of the world. Everybody nine and over has to wear a mask. But that's a smart virus. It knows don't touch anybody nine years or younger. <laughs> Stupid. 
Humanity is stupid. <laughs> I'm telling you. Some of the stuff that we come up with is just dumb. And it makes no sense. Those with an unveiled face, God will show the truth and show himself. What I come in here to say to you this morning, I came in here to say this to you. If you continue to falter a little bit of God and a little bit of the world, or a whole lot of the world today, and oh, yeah, I forgot to pray. You are going to be so unstable. James says that a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. You better choose fire. Because there's an all-consuming fire that is beginning to fall. The coals are hot. Have you ever sat around a campfire and everything's gone to coals? And you'll see the little embers. Are they, is it called embers? They'll just fly, fall, fly up into the to the air, and then all of a sudden, nobody put a piece of wood on there, nobody threw paper in there, all of a sudden the coals just burst out into flames. Guys, the coals are glowing. They are red. All right. All right. They are red. They are pulsating. Every time you open your mouth with a blessing, every time you reach out to touch someone in love, Every time you encourage somebody else, you're a little ember. That, that little ember just went up into the air. Do you hear what I'm trying to say to you today? Choose fire above all else. Choose the word of the Lord over every bit of doubt, over every bit of fear. Choose him. Because right now there is more sadness. There is more depression. There is more anxiety. Um, not just among the world, but among the people of God. And it's sad. And if you're not a compassionate person, ask the Lord. And that's something that I have to pray for. Lord, give me compassion the way Jesus walked in compassion. And I am much more compassionate now than I was prior to 16 and 17. I am. And I don't know that I ever wasn't compassionate I just wanted people to hurry up and get it. Come on. Is this what the word says? Just put it in. This is going to work. But it took me a minute. In 16, I think the Lord's and I'm going to show you what people do. I don't ever want to go through something like that again. So I don't stand up thinking I know it all. <laughs> I know it takes a minute to digest what the word says. But I also know that God is faithful yes, is. to complete every good and perfect work that he has begun in every one of us. He's faithful. Our years, they may be counting on in the natural, but I'm telling you in the spirit, we are just beginning. <laughs> we are just beginning to see that Mount Carmel take over the voice. The voice says, that are not real. They're lies. Voices of the enemy that would lie to us. The spirit of deception, it's got to go. It's got to go. And we have to stand on the word of God. When God saw that the hearts of his people were turned back to him, his fire fell. When the fire begins to fall, listen, you know God is moving. I'm not talking about some fake fire. Like Hophni and Phineas. I'm not talking about taking fire that belongs someplace else and trying to prop it up in your house like it belonged to you. Mm -mm. I'm talking about the fire of God hitting firsthand. But it starts right here. It starts in one. It starts in an individual. I don't know everything that God is doing. Last time we were here, we came from uh, Austin. In December of, no, in October of 19, we moved the ministry headquarters back to Lake Jackson. And all we knew was that we were being positioned. And this is how I said it. We're, be, we're being positioned to host the glory of His presence in an area. Now, I'm not saying we're the only ones. What I am saying is we are to be a part of hosting what God is getting ready. He's already begun. Because like I, the coals are hot. 
They're glowing. Some of you are glowing. <laughs> I want to speak to you. When you were signing during worship, I heard the Lord say, yet yeah, that's called sign language. But the more it is to be a sign to you. It is to be a sign to you because you understand it. You understand that language? It is a sign to you that the understanding of the things of God are about to be sped up ten times quicker than you've been able to get them before. Wow. You're about to know God in a in a deeper way that you have never fathomed an understanding of Him. And miracles, I'm tell, I encourage you to continue to sign and worship oh, yeah. in your sign. Miracles, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to hunt you down. Wow. Wow. There's a scripture in Deuteronomy, I think it's Deuteronomy 28, it says the blessings of the Lord will overtake us and run us down. And one of those blessings is miracles. And I believe miracles are getting ready to run you down. Yeah. People who come into your presence, you won't have to say a word. They're going to leave. And all of a sudden, something's going to change. Wow. Thank you. There will be no having to convince someone. And I really hear the Lord say, that has been a struggle for you. He's trying to convince people why you believe what you believe and how you believe. And, and what I see it as is the Lord is about to speak on your behalf. Uh -huh. You know, I to open your mouth and say a word. Thank you, Lord. You're not going to have to say a uh -huh. word. Amen? Thank you, Lord. God is faithful. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys are ready. God is not playing in this season. He is not playing in this season. And He and it is designed. Well, you know the story of Caleb and Joshua when they came back with the other ten spies. The twelve spies were sent into the promised land. They came back. Caleb and Joshua were the only ones that said, yeah, 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 we see in the natural. Yeah, yeah, we see what is natural. But we also remember the word of the Lord and yeah. what he said. And if we can, yeah, 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 we see in the natural. But if we can hold on to what we know the word of the Lord is, and what we know God has said, you know the rest of the story. We will go in. We will see his glory fall in these present days. Yes. That's the last thing. That's the last thing. Only thing we got now is to see the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm still pondering this this place. I don't know. I haven't gotten an, an answer yet. I'm still pondering it because there are two. There's two. There's scripture that actually supports both sides. But what I'm pondering is. Over the United States of America, has the Lord moved his hand of protection? Because there is scripture that says that when the people fail to follow the Lord, when they fail him, when they fail to keep his commandments, when they do abominations in his sight, when they choose killing of innocent blood. Yeah.
All I know is this. I want to be one of those who are being sanctified. I'm not, I want, I want to be the reflection of God's glory. I want to be transformed from glory to glory that gives him honor. I want to be one that ushers in an awakening. Because that's how much my heart desires to see every believer live in the fullness of who God is to them. I'm tired of seeing people suffer. Yeah. I am. My, I'm tired of watching them struggle just to breathe. I'm, I'm tired of the, of the struggle. But I know that we can get through this. I know that the faltering will stop. I know that when we choose the fire of God, all things will begin to align and make sense. But we have to be willing to lead the one to totally give ourselves to God and to give God to His fire that is coming. Amen? I bless you. I bless you. And if you struggle with this, Loose lips. Here's what you do. Hide me, O Lord, in the cleft of your rock. <laughs> Stay hidden in his word. Amen. Where people have to see him before they see you. Mm -hmm. yes, God. Take the coals. Yes. Cleanse my lips. Here I am. Mm -hmm. Take the coals. Cleanse my lips. Here I am. Lord, cleanse my lips. Here I am.
Look at this man, this guy. He wouldn't, he wouldn't think fear would, would even try to touch him, huh? Well, are you on medication for it? Don't get on medication for it. Don't let the doctor, because all that does is it numbs you, zombifies you. And that's what the doctors want to do. So that's what the world wants to do to quiet us. Do you have a good doctor? You got a Christian doctor? to pray for the Lord that sends you the right doctor. That's what I did. And I and he sent me to a beautiful God-loving, God-fearing woman who took the time. I'm not telling you you need to go to the doctor, but what I am telling you that is that that was free. We need to pray about everything we do in our life, guys. If the Bible says that God orders our steps, then wouldn't it be smart of us to ask him what's the next step? Yes, sir. Exactly. Yeah. And I, you know what? I, I'm not saying this is a 
word from the Lord. I'm not saying it's a word of wisdom from a woman who has lived a long time. You owe yourself 60 days of uninterrupted, uninterrupted time with the Lord. What I mean by uninterrupted, every time you start to go to be in the Word or just to sit in the presence of the Lord, your phone's going to go crazy, emails will start blowing up, work's going to start see all everything that can happen is going to start happening. And you need to be responsible enough to prepare your place, prepare your space, and prepare your time before the Lord. You turn your telephone off. You tell if, 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 if you know if you've got somebody you have to be in contact with, you say, hey, from now this time to this time, my phone's gonna be on silent. Because I have this is self-care. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? And you have to find God. Here's here's the key. You have to find God in the moment. You have to let yourself be alone and let yourself be lonely and let yourself hurt to find him in the midst of that. You hear me? I love you. I don't even know you, but I do. I love you. I love you like, you, like I'm your mom or something. <laughs> I do. And I feel your heart. But I promise you, God's done it for me. He, he's done it for me. I know he can do it for you. Amen. 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 Spirit, you gotta pull your foot out of that door and slam it on that spirit of fear. Because anxiety, panic, and worry, it will make you physically sick. It'll do all kinds of crazy things to your body. So, Father, right now I pray that you give Aaron the strength yes. by your Holy Spirit that he needs for this next 60 days yes. to truly position and posture himself to be alone with you and to find that that freedom of completeness in you. Do what he cannot do for himself. Reveal yourself to him. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, let his, let his heart continue to feel like it feels right now. Amen. I bless you, man. I bless you. Bless you, Lord. Is that the lady here? That you asked for? Don't feel bad. Somebody been fearful that they've got something seriously wrong in their stomach area. Come here. Girl, get it up here. There is no fear to those who love the Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now. 
And Father, we declare, we pray total healing right now. Not only in her stomach area, Father, but from the top of her head yes, to the yes. bottom of her feet. Yes. From yes. the inside out, reveal yes. yourself yes. and let your glory shine forth. Thank you. suffering and others who are sick Lord that they will be healed instantly when she touches them. Thank you Lord. Let the spirit, the gift of healing transform her life. I hear the Lord say this is your hour. This, you're just beginning life, the purpose for his kingdom. Just now. Thank you Lord for the healing gift to each and a lot of times God lets us go through something because that's the initiation of our greatest purpose and part of our mission. God bless you. And I, I want to hear the report. I want to hear it. I want to know. I want to know. You can tell him and he'll tell me. But I want to know. Because I'm telling you, God has reached inside. And all it takes is
Father, I think I even see young ones, very young ones. Don't ever think you're too old. Mm, thank you, Lord. What do your grandkids call you? Grandma? Because I, I heard Mimi to all. Mimi, I heard Mimi to all. Mimi to all. <laughs> Father, thank you. Bless her. Keep her. David, right? David? Jim. Sorry. David, your son. Jim. Father, we bless Jim. Is it James? Jim short for James. Just get rid of Jimmy. All right. Father, I bless him. Keep him strong, Lord. Keep them strong. Strong, strong, strong. The strength of the Lord. I prophesy that the strength of the Lord will be made manifest in ways you've never experienced in this season that is ahead of us. Thank you, Lord. And I give you praise. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Oh, God. Anybody in here whose job has been affected, our business has been affected by all this um, shutdown stuff, or the pipeline. Anybody? Praise God. I heard one morning. I mean, it woke me up out of my sleep. It woke me up out of my sleep. And I I just, this entire area was just booming. Yeah. And had gone crazy because of what we thought. And this one, I heard, I heard, I heard the Lord say, what you thought was heaven what he thought it was going to look like. And it was right after the pipeline got shut down. What you thought it looked like. Hold on. Yeah. And then I just saw this big boom. So you know what? When you drive up to fill your car up at $2.50 a gallon now, you rejoice. You bless that gas station. You bless that president. You thank, you bless, you bless him. Because when we bless somebody, God has to put them in a position to be blessed. Yeah. Hey. Yes. You're going to fill your car. Listen, there are people out in California paying over $4 a gallon now. Okay? So if you thank God that yours is only two fifty dollars or whatever, you're going to fill up, God will provide. He will provide. Don't be fearful of prices. Don't be fearful of what, what's coming. Don't be fearful. Don't falter because you want to see the fire, right? Amen. But I just saw this total explosion. Not a bad explosion. Yeah. I mean, an, an economic explosion yeah. in this area. Yeah. And people think it was totally, I mean, it looked totally different. Totally different than anything we've ever seen. It even caused me to, I drove down to, Surfside, and then I came up the back way through um, Freeport. Came up the back way through Freeport, and then through Flute and all that. And there's a lot of desolate-looking little little neighborhoods and places out there. So I said, Lord, oh, are you sure? <laughs> he just said, Remember what I said. You just remember, remember what you saw. And so I hold on to that. I hold on to it because I believe we are postured in position. For some of the greatest days we've ever had or seen yeah. in the body of Christ. I think what we're about to experience or what is already here, but it's not to fruition, I believe is greater, even greater than what we were at. Many of us were privileged to experience in the 70s and the 80s. I'm telling you, we're about to know the move of God like, and no women are waiting for to believe me? More than that, do you believe the word of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Thank you for having me.